Fears are rising in the U.S. that the popular bluefin tuna caught off the West Coast contains radiation. Scientists say last year's nuclear disaster in Japan is to blame, but some claim these radioactive findings may only be the tip of the iceberg. Artis Medina Kochnova reports. This summer, Californian fishermen are ready to inspect their catch closer than ever before. The word radiation creates uh, fear in people. The reason for such concern lies in the latest discovery by scientists that bluefin tuna caught off the Californian coast contain radioactive isotopes brought over from the waters of Japan. It's led many to believe the scale of disaster was far greater than Tokyo's authorities have ever admitted. Last year's devastating earthquake and tsunami not only killed thousands, but also knocked out the Fukushima nuclear plant, spilling uncontrolled amounts of radiation into the atmosphere, soil and sea. The Japanese government has been accused in the past of failing to provide full information about the incident and of downplaying the dangers. The fact that the uh, reactors were in full meltdown, which was known about by the government, literally within days of, uh, of the uh, incident taking place and was not actually reported in the media for months afterwards, which is almost unthinkable. The news that migratory fish may now be bringing that radioactivity across the Pacific has sparked a media frenzy in the U.S. This is the first time such a large migrating fish has been shown to carry radioactivity so far. This next item made a lot of U.S. consumers sit up and take notice. They've actually found low levels of radiation in seafood off the coast of California. That raises a lot of alarm bells. But there are fears that radiation in bluefin tuna is only the first sign of much worse disaster to come for the West Coast. Radiation is coming across the Pacific in the ocean currents, contaminating all of the sea life. It's been completely hidden. Uh, it's a covert... Radiation experts believe the real scale of the nuclear disaster will not be known for many decades, as the radiation released during the meltdown is accumulating in the global environment. Later this summer, scientists will repeat their study on migratory fish, but this time on a far greater scale than before and taking in a number of different species. Experts say this will provide a real test of just how much radiation has been flowing across from Japanese waters to American shores. Madina Kushno, RT, reporting from Los Angeles, California. Japan's nuclear power plants are slowly getting back online. The second reactor to be restarted since last year's accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has begun to generate electricity. Kansai Electric Power Company says output at the number four reactor of its OE plant topped 15 percent on Saturday morning. It's expected to reach full capacity on Wednesday. The reactor reached criticality, a self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction last Thursday. Experts with the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency say further studies are needed on a 900-meter underground fissure that runs north-south between the number two and number three reactors at the OE plant. They said a lack of data about the fissure led them to propose the investigation. The OE plant's number three reactor was only recently brought back online. The number four reactor was restarted on Wednesday night. The agency says it will not order the reactors stopped for the survey, but that the outcome could affect their operation. At 7 a.m. on Saturday, Kansai Electric engineers turned on the switch to reconnect the power generator to a transmission grid in the central control room. Senior Vice Industry Minister Seishu Makino was on hand to oversee the procedure. The plant's number three reactor, the first to be reactivated, achieved a full power output earlier this month. The amount of electricity generated by the two reactors is still insufficient. I want residents to continue to cooperate in saving energy. Once Kansai Electric's two reactors are fully operational, the government is expected to lift its power-saving targets for areas served by three other regional utilities. 
The experts also say a crack 250 meters below the number one reactor at the Shika nuclear plant in Ishikawa prefecture is highly likely an active fault, but that analysis has been insufficient. The agency has instructed the plant's operators, Kansai Electric and Hokuriku Electric, to survey the sites. The government's quake resistance guidelines do not allow construction of key nuclear facilities directly above active faults. This means the number one reactor at Shika plant might never be restarted. The safety of workers at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has come under scrutiny. A subcontractor has been found to have instructed workers at the plant to under-report the amount of radiation exposure by placing lead covers on their dosimeters. Health Ministry officials have looked into the details of the incident by checking data on the exposure of workers. The officials inspected an office at the plant where the data is stored on Saturday. The office belongs to the company that provided work to the subcontractor. The subcontractor, Buildup, was in charge of applying antifreeze to pipes in locations where high radiation levels had been detected. According to its president, one executive told workers last December to cover the dosimeters they were wearing with lead to show lower doses. The executives reportedly explained that he had nine workers use lead covers. The executive also said that he was frightened by an alarm wearing of a sudden rise, alarm warning of a sudden rise in radiation. Okay. The health ministry suspects the company may have violated the law that requires dosimeters be used to properly protect workers. Thank you. 
This is all this is a cover up. This is a false flag. This is more poisoning of the ocean and the atmosphere and the biosphere. No one can escape. Um, Miss Milky the Clown here. I just want to let you know that um, for right now, I'm still uploading on both channels, Miss Milky the Clown and my new channel, Miss Milky the Clown 1. Um, if you wouldn't mind switching over to Miss Milky the Clown 1, I'm kind of worried about the copyright strikes. I've got two of them over on Miss Milky the Clown regular. Um, so anyway, I'll put a link and uh, feel free to subscribe if you want to get to the Fukushima updates as long as I decide to keep doing them. Thanks.